Hello everyone this is part 24 of what if Naruto and Hanata trained together and a spark happened, and I hope you guys enjoy this video and to like, to subscribe, to share, and check out the playlist, to see more comment down below, now let's start the intro. Join my membership the perks are great, it's in the description. Hey, 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 Anko chuckled darkly, I've been looking forward to this all week. Good morning, Choji. The large Chunin stood steady, directly meeting his teacher's eyes without a hint of fear or challenge. The toad sage stared through the partially open door to the hospital room with a goofy, lecherous grin. Sure, she wasn't quite as endowed as he normally preferred, and the best part was covered. But despite that, he was more than happy to ogle Yuga Azuki's slightly larger than usual chest as she nursed the infant Rei Uchiha. If the Kunoiki had noticed his presence, she gave no indication. Just as Yuga was about to set down the baby, giving him a brief, clear view, Jiraiya felt a murderous intent moving swiftly towards him, and he quickly composed his face into the appearance of total seriousness. Good morning, Sunad, he addressed his former teammate, his voice all business, I wanted to meet Itachi's daughter, but she is bonding with her new mother, so I didn't want to interrupt. Right, the hawkage calmed somewhat, not entirely convinced. I presume you are the one who put the wet nurse seal on Yugao, he prompted. The medical Sanon did not answer, instead her fury began to build again. He held up his hands in submission. Fine, none of my business, he conceded. Still, soon it said, her voice carrying a tone of allegation, it is odd that Itachi never told us about this Erika, or that he had a child. Just what are you implying? Jiraiya counted evenly. You were his contact all those years, she told him directly, and he trusted you more than anyone else. I can't believe you didn't know anything about this. Apparently I wasn't the one he trusted most, the Toad Sage concluded darkly. Then he forced those emotions away, adding, he never told me anything about getting married or having a child, though he did mention this Erika a couple of times around five or six years ago. He wanted me to let Sarutobi know that the rakage was still hunting for Keke Genkai. And he did occasionally make statements about having reasons beyond Madara that he wanted to stay undercover. Sunad frowned thoughtfully, then shrugged. She started to comment, but was interrupted when Yugao's voice emerged from the hospital nursery room where she, Kakashi, and Rei were staying. If you two don't want to discuss state secrets in the hallway, I'm done with the feeding, the former Anbu agent chided them, and against my better judgment, I will introduce Rei to the pervy sage. Sunad laughed, but Jiraiya looked annoyed. I thought you were above that, Yugao, he said in mock hurt, as he stepped into the room. She smiled angelically at them. According to all the members of both my team and Kakashi's team that is your official uh, Master Jiraiya, she informed him. Now there's an idea, Sunid grinned as she shut the door. The male Sanon groaned in response. Good morning, Naruto, Aruka greeted his surrogate nephew. Hi, Aruka-sensei, Naruto's acknowledgement was unusually subdued. He did not meet his teacher's eyes, and had entered the room slowly. Is something the matter? Aruka asked. When the question didn't garner a response, the Jonan decided to try a different tactic. Did Hanata's little distraction yesterday morning make you mess up your weapons test? Yumino teased lightly. Uzumaki turned red briefly, but then shook his head. Nah, that went great, Naruto admitted, though his demeanor did not change, Temari even accepted the staff blade as a real weapon. Then what is it? Aruka pressed. It's this genjutsu test, he complained, there's no way I can pass. It can't be that bad, the elder shinobi tried to deny him. Honestly, I would have to say I haven't improved at all since the academy, Naruto claimed, collapsing further into despair. His teacher watched him for a minute, and then came to a decision. Naruto, I'm going to tell you something, Aruka said conspiratorially, you know that before I became a jonin two years ago, I was a chunin, right? The younger man nodded. Well, two years ago wasn't the first time I underwent the Jonan trials, Yumino told him, when I was 19 I took them. I was trying to keep up with Anko, who became a Tokubutsu Jonan two years earlier. But it was a fiasco. I totally screwed up my Genjutsu and Taijutsu tests, and though it was close, I also failed the skills test. 
I was so mortified I didn't think about trying again until you left the village to train with Master Jiraiya. So even if you make a fool of yourself here, I'd say you're in pretty good company. Thanks, Aruka-sensei, Uzumaki managed a smile. So let's get started, the Jonan prompted, after all, the only thing worse than failing is failing to try, right? Right, Naruto perked up, finally wearing his normal grin, it's not like I've been ever been afraid to mess up before. Good, Aruka smiled broadly at him, first, you have to show that you can break Genjutsu used against you. Are you ready? Naruto's smirk slipped, but he nodded the affirmative. Okay, we'll start with something simple, the proctor offered evenly. He signed quickly, and whispered the name so the Chunin couldn't hear it. Then he took out a kunai, and turned it over in his hand. As Aruka displayed the weapon, it appeared to transform, growing longer, and sprouting a hilt, until finally it was a two-handed sword with a kunai-shaped blade. Naruto placed his hands together, and rotated the chakra in his body. Release, the blonde ordered, but nothing changed. Release, Naruto proclaimed more loudly, pressing his palms together. His uncle shook his head and took a step closer, raising the weapon. Come on, release, Uzumaki begged as the kunai sword started to descend. No longer sure it was an illusion, Naruto jumped backwards to avoid the blade. Naruto, Aruka scolded him again, there's no way this kunai could cut you from so far away. Naruto blinked, and the sword was a dagger again. He realized that had he held his ground, the real blade would not have even come within a foot of his body. Sorry, Aruka-sensei, he rubbed his finger under his nose shamefully, but when you started swinging that thing, I suddenly wasn't sure if it was really a genjutsu or if it was some sort of ninjutsu. That was butchering dagger genjutsu, Yumino explained to his student, it is indeed rank genjutsu, though an uncommon one. Well, let's try another one. He signed quickly, and then split in two. Except the two Arukas were far from identical. One looked normal, but the other was only about eight years old, wearing a white t-shirt and jean shorts. Two of me, right? Aruka asked. Both copies moved their lips in unison, but their voice emerged from between them. Naruto nodded. And which one is real? The one on my right, Naruto sounded mildly annoyed, and pointed to the adult Aruka. Good, the pair agreed, now make the illusion disappear. Right. Naruto said firmly, squeezing his eyes shut to concentrate, one fake Aruka sensei, release. He opened his eyes, but both versions of his teacher were still there. He repeated the process, but before he could announce his intent, he was interrupted. This is stupid, the fox demon suddenly stated. What? My trying to get promoted? Naruto demanded. Well, yes, the vixen conceded, but I meant playing around with illusions. Real is what I choose it to be. If you don't want the child version of your teacher around, destroy it with your raising gun. Trying to do anything else is a waste of energy. Shut up, Naruto growled under his breath. The Arukas glanced at him in confusion. What? The proctor asked. Sorry, Aruka-sensei, Naruto frowned in distaste, the fuzzball is hassling me. Well, ignore it, Yumino counseled. Release, Naruto tried to break the visual spell, release. Release. Let's stop there, the Jonan said, ending his technique, maybe you should show me what genjutsu you know instead. Sure, Naruto agreed indifferently. He considered for a moment, and then continued, well, the first illusion I learned was this. He moved through the four hand signs much more slowly than usual, before stating, ninja art, palette swap jutsu. Slowly, Naruto's hair changed from blonde to grey to almost black. Is that all? Aruka asked gently. Palette swap was only a D-ranked technique, and most ninja who used it could change the color of their hair, eyes, clothes, even their skin and teeth with only one use of the technique. Yeah, Naruto admitted, ending the mirage morosely. Why change your look with an illusion, instead of changing your real appearance? The QB prompted again. Just leave me alone, you stupid fox, the teenage shinobi exclaimed loudly. Naruto. She keeps bothering me about how she thinks genjutsu is a waste of time and energy, the Chunin explained sharply, she says instead of throwing away my chakra on illusions, I should just use ninjutsu to do the same thing for real. Really, Aruka considered that thoughtfully, and what does she say when I tell her I can make a forest with genjutsu, but not ninjutsu? Naruto paused for a moment, and then growled, she just made fun of you. 
What did she say? The proctor continued, intrigued. She said some guy named Senju Harashima could make a forest with ninjutsu, so you are obviously inferior to him. Yumino chuckled, well, I never would claim to be an equal of Senju Hashirama. There's a reason he was the first Hokage, after all. Now she says you're smarter than you look. That will be enough, Aruka coughed, not sure he liked a compliment from the demon, even a backhanded one, let's get back to your test. What do you want to show me next? What I want to show you and can show you are two different things, Uzumaki sniffed. Just give it your best. If I'm gonna fail, might as well fail big, right? Naruto decided with a glimmer of his normal attitude, my best A rank Genjutsu, masking Storm's Jutsu. Naruto completed the hand signs sharply, and confidently. But afterwards, nothing happened. Not the drop of water or whisper of wind was experienced by the former academy teacher. He watched Naruto sadly, as the young man focused as hard as he could on the technique. I'm sorry Naruto, the examiner stopped him, but nothing is happening. Maybe you should try it again. Yeah, sure. His brief reverie dashed, Naruto formed the seals of the illusion more slowly and deliberately. Familiar with the move, the scarred Jonan could tell his student was executing the jutsu properly. And the echoes of chakra ringing off the blonde youth could be tangibly felt. But despite that, the genjutsu never formed, and never invaded Aruka's senses. Stop, he commanded the younger ninja gently, quickly adding, maybe we should try something less complex. Okay, Naruto agreed. The team proceeded to flawlessly perform the hand signed 6B and C rank genjutsu techniques, expending vast amounts of chakra, all with no impact at all. With each attempt, Yukihana's son grew more frustrated and tired. Are we done here, Aruka-sensei? Naruto panted, finally too exhausted to keep trying. Yes, Aruka said simply. After a slight bow the teen hurried out of the room. Once he was gone, Aruka finally allowed himself show his concern over what he had seen and more importantly, what he had heard. Hanata was already waiting in the dojo when Yugao scrambled in at 11.59am. Sorry, Hanata, the Jonans said quickly, I lost track of time. Were you at the monument again? Hanata asked gently. No, the hospital, Azuki answered. Oh, Hanata's eyes went with worry, I'm sorry. What's wrong? No, nothing's wrong, she chuckled, I was visiting Master Jiraiya. Why? Hanata asked. Though her question was innocent enough, Yugao looked away and cleared her throat. Nothing worth discussing now, the former Anbu Shinobi told her, as we are already starting to run late. I suppose Naruto told you how I run this exam. No, the younger woman shook her head slightly, Lady Sunid scolded Naruto for wanting to compare notes, so we have been very careful not to discuss the tests that we have not both already taken. Then I guess I need to explain, Azuki said thoughtfully, and then gave Hanata a rundown of her, style then spa, examination method. The Chunan nodded along, seemingly pleased with the format of the exhibition. I do have one question, Yugao sensei Hanata put forth, would it be against your rules for the two of us to use shadow clones so I can show you more than nine taijutsu styles? If we each created a clone, I could exhibit twice as many taijutsu types. Or with two clones I could. Hanata, Yugao cut her off gently, do you honestly have 27 different taijutsu styles you want to show me? The pale girl blushed, and shook her head, no. And would you have 18 styles you could exhibit? Kakashi's love oppressed. But to the Jonan's surprise, while still looking uncomfortable, Hanata nodded, yes. Really, Azuki was surprised, not because she doubted the girl, but because she knew Hanata was not the type to lie or exaggerate. Yes, I think I can, Hanata answered humbly, still looking down. Then this calls for a change of plans, the proctor decided, placing her hands together, and proclaiming, Shadow Clone Jutsu. In that instant, not one but four Yugals were present in the dojo. We'll borrow a second dojo. Temari does not have an exam right now, so number three should be open. That way, two of you can spar with me, while the other two show me the technical side of those taijutsu styles, Yugao suggested, we'll keep the time frame for taijutsu at 20 minutes, but this will give you more of a chance to show each style. But, Hanata started, uncertain, can you change the exam that much? Anko-sensei said she couldn't change the rules of her skills test. 
That's not an issue, the Jonan explained, because the Taijutsu requirements are set by the conclave, and most style exhibited are codified, the proctor is given a great deal of leeway. However, the skills test is not well defined. There used to be some standards, like crossing a singing floor, or catching a butterfly. But nobody uses singing floors anymore, ninjas have too many way past them, and a pair of video cameras are cheaper, easier to install, and less obtrusive. As a result, the proctors for the skills pillar must submit a testing plan to the Jonan Council. Of course, a small amount of deviation is unavoidable, like Anko telling you to tag her, but she couldn't tell Choji that he can't go back to the village and make out with Eno. How did you? Hanata turned beet red, and couldn't finish the sentence. We had dinner with Anko and Aruka last night, Yugao explained, not laughing at her. So shall we begin? The elder Kunoiki asked, trying to help the young woman recover her composure. Yes, Hanata said quickly, before producing three clones of her own. Two of the copies moved towards the door, while the other pair spread out in the spacious training room. One of Yugao's copies indicated the entryway to her, sister, who nodded, and they lead the two Hanatas away. The remaining two Jonan duplicates turned back to face the remaining Chunan facsimiles. What style do you wish to start with? The true Yugao asked her exhibitor. I believe I will start with the gentle fist, both Hanatas said in unison, growing confident now that she was more in her element. I will fight you, Yugao sensei, the Chunan clone further in the room announced, assuming the fighting stance. Her left foot and palm were pushed far forward, and she held her fingers loosely. She waited for the other kunoiki to prepare herself, then moved in quickly yet consciously. Before the white-eyed girl reached her, the purple-eyed woman launched a roundhouse kick at her side. Hanata lightly tapped the foot with her right palm, but this did not stop Yugao's leg, and the Huga sign was struck and sent sprawling. Hanata, Azuki gasped in surprise, rushing over to the fallen princess, why didn't you block that? I did, Hanata frowned thoughtfully, but I'm afraid the gentle fist is not well suited for this kind of sparring. Had we been fighting for real, the chakra I expel would have knocked your kick away, and probably numbed your foot. But I can't use my chakra, because even a partial hit with the gentle fist can cause major injuries. Yugao considered that. She was familiar with the basic tenets of the Hugo fighting style, though she had never seen it in actual combat. Then, since we are both shadow clones, perhaps we should fight in earnest. The examiner suggested, after all, if one of us, dies, the only cost is some chakra. Hanata answered with a question, curious but peculiarly not anxious, won't we waste a lot of chakra if we do that? I was told you had purchased a whole bag of food pills, Yugao smiled softly. Yes, Hanata agreed, but I only brought one with me. I didn't expect to need them for the taijutsu test. Then I guess you'll just have to keep me from destroying your clones, the former Anbu agent counted with a slight twinkle of mischief. I should say the same to you, Sensei, Hanata regained her feet and resumed her stance. Don't get ahead of yourself, Azuki counted. She stepped in with a hard right cross. But Hanata pivoted at the waist, and as the Jonan's hand sailed by, the Chunan brought her left hand up, jamming her energy lace fingers into Yugao's elbow. Even as the elder Shinobi's wrist fell loose, Hanata softly pressed her palm to the opposing clone's stomach. With a slight look of surprise, Yugao's copy exploded. In this case, I am not, Hanata responded to Yugao's previous statement with poise, even as the real tester spawned another facsimile. On the other side of the wall, in training room number three, the other set of Yugao's had also asked the Chunan duplicates which taijutsu she was going to show first. I'll start with the hard fist, the younger Kunoiki informed her. Good, the copy of Yugao near the front of the dojo assumed a fighting stance, while the other Jonan shadow moved back against the outer wall to give Hanata space to perform her kata. As was fitting the style, the sparring team charged her proctor, leading with her fists. Your second O is excellent, Yugao conceded, panting slightly, not quite S rank, but very close. So what will your last style be? My other set is showing the whipping willow style, Hanata told her, and Azuki nodded, unsurprised, so I will be showing the tiger and heron style. I might have guessed, the Jonan told her, Naruto told me you had been working on that taijutsu with him. He did. Hanata smiled happily. He works on it harder than I do, Naruto's girl added, but without diminishing her mood, because it's his mother's creation. 
But I'm still pretty good. Yugao remembered her sparring match with Naruto the previous Tuesday, and wondered what she was in for. Even if Naruto was more skilled in this taijutsu than his girlfriend, the Chun and Kunoiki was faster and more flexible. Hanata smoothly slid her body into position. The basic stance of the tiger and heron was superficially similar to the stance of the hand fist and tiger styles, feet just over shoulder width apart, with the user's off foot leading. Her left arm was perpendicular to the ground in front of her body. Her right was parallel to the mat and positioned by her head. And unlike the hard fist or pure tiger styles, her left hand was tightly closed, while her right was open in a claw. Yugao assumed the same posture but with both hands closed deciding to start with the hard fist style. In her sparring with Naruto, she had tried the arc limbs technique to start, but the circular attacks had proven less than effective against Yukihana's arts. Still, as befitting the hard fist, the proctor attacked first, aiming a right cross at the girl's face. Hanata dropped under the attack, catching the jonin off guard. In the same move, the young woman's right hand darted out, raking across Yugao's abdomen. Had they not been sparring, the chakra in Hanata's claw would have seriously injured or even killed the clone. As it was, the blow hurt. But Hanata wasn't finished. She spun her body, extending her leg. Yugao jumped over the expected sweep, however she miscalculated. The Huga Cyan turned her leg up, and the heel kick that had been aimed for Yugao's chin caught her left B instead. The clone Jonin used the attack's force to flip back, gaining some distance to form a new strategy. That's two mistakes, Yugao chided herself, then repeated to herself the three basic tenets of the tiger and heron, do not block, attack. Do not control, destroy. Do not dodge, unless it is to take advantage of an opening. Yugao switched to the wolf pack style, and launched a simultaneous left knife hand at Hanata's throat and a left knee at her right side. Hanata took the blow to her gut, but sandwiched Yugao's attacking wrist in between a pair of punches that broke both forearm bones. Still gasping in pain from Yugao's knee strike, Hanata slid in, slamming her right elbow into Yugao's temple, then bringing her foot around in a pulling kick that forced the jonin into the ground, crushing her spine. The clone exploded, and Hanata froze with a look of horror. I'm so sorry, Yugao sensei, she bowed to the original, her face bright red. Don't beat her upset, Hanata, the jonin counseled, creating a new shadow clone, I stopped pulling my punches before you did. You just did a better job. And you were not using any chakra, right? Still, do you want to stop? Yugao pressed gently, I have some idea of your skills, but I don't think I have the whole picture yet. And we still have more than 10 minutes. Hanata pondered this, and finally shook her head. No, the teen said softly but firmly, I am so happy that Naruto let me learn this style with him, and I am proud of how far Naruto and I have advanced in our studies. I want to show you just what I can do. Good, Yugao agreed, we'll just both have to be more careful. Azuki's newest clone placed both her feet together, and stood with both arms in front of her, open-ended. Hanata's eyes widened, recognizing the style. But she resumed her fighting stance, and honored the basis for both styles by attacking first. As Yugao had deduced, the loose, defensive method of the Whipping Willow was a better match for the Tiger and Heron than other, more aggressive techniques. Hanata punched, clawed, and kicked, but the only time the Chunin landed any blows was during the Jonin's counter-attacks. So long as Yugao only protected herself, Hanata could not hit her. But in turn, any hint of offense by the Proctor was punished by the examinee. And Azuki could tell that, had they been landing real blows, she would have been in much worse shape than the Chunin. Finally she noticed her opening. Stop, the purple-eyed woman announced, time is up. Both Hanatas panted, and she released the shadow clone thankfully. A few seconds later, the clones in the other room also cancelled themselves. How did, I, do, Yugao sensei? Hanata asked in between deep breaths. The Jonin considered the question for a moment. In her previous examinations, she had not told the candidate how they fared. But given Hanata's dichotomous nature of late, and her fondness for the young woman, Yugao decided it would not hurt to tell her. You did splendid, Hanata, Yugao told her, I am genuinely impressed by your mastery of unarmed combat. You have passed, and will receive my recommendation. Hanata blushed at the praised, but smiled sincerely, and said, Thank you, Yugao sensei. Are you sure about this? Sunad asked, 
turning her chair away from him, right now, if something happens to me before Naruto is ready, you would be my choice to be the next Hokage. If you do this, there is almost no way that could happen. I have no desire to be the Hokage, Kakashi Hitaki answered simply. Neither did I, she said wistfully, but I did it because the village needed me. And I'd say it's turned out pretty good. Nevertheless, the copy ninja was not swayed, I have decided. This is what I need to do. And it isn't as if I can't change my mind later. No, I guess not, she sighed, I guess I'll get the paperwork started. When are you going to tell those three? I plan to wait until after the results of the Jonan trials, he explained, they have enough on their minds for now. I have never come this close to that nest of demons before, the reaper told her companions, shifting the new weapon slung across her back. She shuddered, as she looked upon the five stone faces on the cliff not so far away. Frightened, Zetsu asked, adding in a different voice, or is it anticipation? You could say I am eager, the shield bandaged woman agreed, there is someone down there I really want to see. Just keep yourself under control, Deodara warned her sharply, we have a job to do. Like he's one to talk, the white side of the plant renegade whispered to his new partner. She did not respond, she simply stared at the outline of the Konohagaku. I can do this, Hanata told her reflection, before grabbing the tube of toothpaste and smearing a little too much on her toothbrush. The Huger heiress forced herself to only think positive thoughts, because she knew that weapons were her weakest pillar. Her teeth suitably polished, Hanata shed her camisole and panties, and moved quickly into the shower. The kunoiki shivered under the cold water, but she was unwilling to wait for it to warm. She and Naruto were meeting at 10 a.m. at his condo, and she wanted to get in a full three hours of practice with her weapons first. The pale beauty washed her hair, noticing that it was almost back to the length it had been before the battle with the vampire demon. She had become so accustomed to braiding it that she hadn't realized how long it had become. She debated getting it cut, but decided to hold off. Her locks rinsed, she caught up the soap and sponge and began to lightly scrub her skin. As Hanata slipped on her uniform's top, and secured her obi, her thoughts drifted back to the previous night. Even though Naruto had not been expecting to pass the genjutsu test, he had not expected to do so badly. But with a good meal, some reassuring words, and a little bit of dessert, Hanata had been able to lighten his mood. She blushed at the memory of his kei, and the knowledge that she had been ready to make love to him. But Naruto had managed to show restraint, and fact that made her proud, thankful, and disappointed all at once. Hanata picked up the duffel bag containing her practice weapons, and jogged down to the courtyard. Thankfully, it was empty, so the older daughter of Hyashi deposited her bag on the deck surrounding the atrium, and began to set out her weapons. First were the kunai, shuriken, and needles, the weapons grouped together as light throwing blades. Next was her original choice of primary weapon, the Manriki Gasari. Under that were her swords, the short sword, Wakazashi, and Katana. After placing them on the patio, she assembled her quarterstaff. That task complete she took out the paired tonfus Neji had helped her learn. With all her other weapons ready, Hanata summoned her new primary weapon, the Koke Ginmaki. As soon as the braces appeared on her wrists, she removed them, and set them on top of her bag. The protruding edges of the forearm guards interfered with the tonfus, so Hanata decided to practice with those first, and then requip her coat when practicing with all of her other weapons. She stepped into the middle of the natural space, clearing her mind and holding the swinging clubs tightly against her wrists. She saluted her invisible opponent, and then stepped back into a fighting stance even as she swung the tonfa in her right hand at her enemy. She blocked the counter-strike with both weapons, and then rotated her left-hand weapon into her target's shoulder. A number of small clues spun Hanata around just in time to block her wooden practice katana as it descended towards her head. She shifted her right arm to look at her attacker, and was only mildly surprised to see her younger sister. Good morning, Hanabi, Hanata said evenly. Hanabi Huga had been in a particularly foul mood since returning from the Land of Lightning. Her team had been eliminated on the second test, and in the two weeks since, the girl had alternated between snappish and moping. The younger sister had been telling anyone who would listen that it was the fault of her teammates and their sensei chose her Akamaiki. But now the only ones who would hear her out were the branch family members she cornered, and their increasingly unsympathetic father. 
Hanabi swung the long blade again, this time aiming at Hanata's neck. She wore a particularly dark expression, and was attacking with all her strength. Even so, Hanata was able to stop her two-handed strike with only one of her tonfa, possessing superior strength from both age and training. After pushing the sword away, Hanata twirled the bar in her left hand, bringing it within an inch of Hanabi's face. The younger Kunoiki grimaced from the implied hit, and stabbed forward towards her sister's stomach. The Chunin easily sidestepped the attack, scoring two more near hits against her opponent's left elbow and the back of her neck. The Genin practically snarled as she turned back again to face her target. Hanabi watched her sister carefully, but Hanata made no move to counterattack, nor did she indicate any anger or disappointment over the ambush. Instead, Naruto's beloved simply observed her younger sibling, waiting for the next blow. Her teeth clenched in fury, Hanabi tensed, not to attack, but to dash the practice katana against the grass. At the last instant she stopped and returned the weapon to where Hanata had arrayed. Without saying a word, she stalked off. That was foolish, Neji commented, stepping out from one of the other hallways leading to the courtyard, attacking you like that. She wasn't attacking me, brother, Hanata interjected quickly, Hanabi was helping me practice for my weapons test. Neji smiled slightly as he shook his head, it is kind of you to cover for her, but there is no excuse for what she did. She may not have been trying to kill you, but she certainly wouldn't have been upset if she had given you a concussion or broken one of your arms. I think I may need to have a talk with Lord Hyashi. Please, don't, Hanata requested with all the strength she could muster, I harbor no resentment to Hanabi over this, and being confronted will only make her feel more angry and alone. Neji nodded slowly, unconvinced, but also unable to refute her reasoning. He bowed slightly, and left her to her training. Hanata returned her tonfus to her tote, and took up the quarterstaff. As she did, she exhaled and allowed her sadness to show on her face. Just a second, Naruto shouted. He quickly glanced at the digital clock next to his TV, which read H5, 6. It was too early for Hanata, leaving Uzumaki puzzled as to who was at his door. The team dropped off his ceiling, flipping in midair to land on his feet. Instead of his normal orange jumpsuit, he was clad in a tradition stealth shozaku. He was covered from the neck down in matte black, reinforced, silk, except for his hands. He quickly trotted over to his front door. After unlocking and opening the portal, he was confronted by the unexpected presence of his girlfriend. Oh, hey Hanata, he stammered slightly, you're earlier than I thought you'd be. He stepped out of her way, swinging his arm to indicate she should come in. I'm sorry, she said sprightly, I got done early and thought I would come over and watch you. Doesn't that contradict the purpose of stealth training? Naruto murmured. Despite the young woman's smile and light tone of voice, he could sense something else. Once she was inside, he closed and secured the door before approaching the subject. Hanata, what's wrong? He asked carefully, embracing her from behind. The Hugo scion froze, before turning around in his arms to stare at him in mock confusion. Nothing, she counted weakly, her lips turning down for an instant. Hanata, he pulled her tighter, and whispered in her ear, are you trying to make me worry? She sighed, then settled her head on his shoulder. It's barely worth mentioning, she told him, just, I had a fight with Hanabi this morning. It isn't a problem for me, but I'm worried about her. She is getting more aggressive and selfish. I have even overheard father lamenting how he parented her. And since the she returned from the land of lightning, it has only gotten worse. Maybe we need to beat some sense into her, he suggested. Her head jerked up in surprise, but when she saw his expression, she realized he was joking. At least, mostly. She smirked back at him. No matter how much my father has accepted you, and regrets Hanabi's recent attitude, I don't think he will let you do that, she warned him. Actually, I was thinking of grammar Sunid, he informed her. That might work, she conceded thoughtfully. Then both started giggling. Better, he asked, releasing her after giving her a brief K. A little, she nodded, you can cheer me up, Naruto, but it doesn't change the underlying problem with Hanabi. I don't know how to help her. It might be you can't, he told her gently, there was a long time where I thought if I could just find the right words, I could convince Sasuke to come back. But after I came back from my training with Master Jiraiya, when we fought I realized that there was nothing I could do for him. 
Not that I'm saying Hanabi's as bad as that jerk, he continued hastily, seeing her worried look, just that you might not be the one to help Hanabi. You might be too close to her. She nodded again, looking at him with a gentle grin. Thank you, she told him. Anytime, Hanata-chan. Very good, Chosa Akamaiki walked over to the target, and admired the precision of the six-pointed star Hanata had, sketched, with 18 kunai. After the Jonan nodded his approval again, the young woman jogged over and retrieved the throwing knives, checking each one for damage. Most she returned to the main compartment her sack, but three were chipped or splintered, and she slid them into a separate pouch for recycling. This was easily your best weapon, he told her, far above even your Manriki Gasari. Very top of the A rank. That makes seven weapons. Mr. Akamaiki, she interrupted him carefully, if you don't mind, there is something else I would like to show for the light throwing blades. Of course, the rotund proctor nodded, please continue. Hanata activated her upgraded Keke Genkai. Then she drew a single kunai in her right hand, while taking into her left hand a stack of shuriken so tall she could barely hold them all. The chunan squared off with the now clean target. Except instead of throwing her dagger at the target, she hurtled in upwards at an angle so it would pass right over the tree containing the bull's eye. Hina, Chosa started to ask something, but stopped as she flipped the first shuriken into her right hand, and released it at high velocity. Almost as soon as the first was gone, Hanata, loaded, the second throwing star. The first star hit the kunai, redirecting it downwards and to their right. The second star hit, and the kunai was flying straight again, but was going to miss the mark to the right. Her third star deflected the dagger back to the left, but now at a sharper downward angle. A fourth projectile diverted the kunai up without changing that it would hit to the left of the tree containing the target. The fifth shuriken put the knife's course back on a parallel to the original and third paths. When the sixth throwing star struck the kunai, the Akamaiki clan leader realized Hanata was causing the kunai to spiral in a hexagon pattern as it approached the target. His face went slack, understanding the dexterity, visual acuity, and mathematical skill necessary to execute the flashy display. The next eleven shurikens continued the pattern, scribing a regular six-sided polygon around the target. The eighteenth and final throwing star diverted the kunai in a different direction, and the ninja blade buried itself in the center of the bull's eye, though not as deeply as if she had thrown it directly. Hanata exhaled with a smile of satisfaction. Hanata, that was the Uchiha deflection technique. Chosa told her in awe. She nodded. Where did you learn that? He continued forcing some of the wonder out of his voice, or more importantly, how did you learn it? The Uchiha carefully guarded that skill, they always claimed the technique was impossible without the Sharingan. Kakashi-sensei taught me, she responded softly, not knowing it was a secret art, he thought my Suijin Byakugan, combined with my speed would be enough to let me perform the technique without the Sharingan. It was hard at first, but I managed to master it. Then where did Kakashi learn it? Chosa pondered silently. Hanata stared at him nervously, so he took out a pear, and bit deeply into it to help regain his composure. Well, then I will definitely have to say you are an S rank with throwing weapons, he declared, then added more softly, for what it is worth. Hanata nodded. She understood that the light throwing blades weapons set was considered a common skill. Unlike common ninjutsu like the shadow clone technique, the hand projectiles were still allowed for the weapons test, but was generally frowned on as a soft choice, and only counted as a weapon one rank lower than the candidate actually displayed. Still, if Hanata was considered to have an S rank in light throwing blades, it could count for one of her two A rank weapons. You haven't shown me your signature weapon yet, the heavy Jonan noted, unless it was the weighted chain. But you only showed that at B rank. He sounded concerned at the end, and Hanata hurriedly contradicted him. No, my main weapon is something else, she answered delicately, I'm just not sure about them. Don't worry, you'll do fine, he reassured her kindly. That's not it, she smiled sadly, my primary weapon is an unusual choice, so I am worried to won't be recognized. I'll be the judge of that, he said sternly, so let's see this mystery weapon. Hanata raised her arms, and summoned Ginmaki into position. My primary weapons are these coat, she announced. Her proctor frowned in thought as he considered the devices. Definitely a unique choice, he agreed, then ordered, show me. Hanata backed away, and began to show her combat style. 
She began with the simple attacks, and then moved into more complex maneuvers. She had basically redesigned the style based on taijutsu styles that focused on the lower arms, and a few older scrolls she had read, authored by the previous users of the weapon. Naruto had found most of the old information for her, and had helped her work out her way to use Ginmaki as a full-fledged weapon. After exhibiting the strikes of the style, she began to launch into the forms they had created. Even as she fought her invisible foe, she could almost see Naruto opposite her performing the attacks and blocks with his infectious grin. She settled, and flowed smoothly through the kata, before ending with a bow to her, opponent. Very interesting. You have a surprisingly broad variety of strikes for forearm bashes and elbows. And your defense would be undeniably strong. But still, you had a large number of punches in there, more than a usual for a weapon style. And there were some strange attacks in there I couldn't quite understand. And my punches, she asked, careful but not perturbed, were they not poorly executed? Too stiff, of the sort that would hurt my hands or wrists. He considered it, and then agreed, yes, I suppose they were. And my punches, would they make more sense if I was holding a katar? She queried slyly. He nodded, still unclear where she was going. And those strikes you didn't understand, she continued, were they the attacks where I slash with my forearm, instead of striking? He nodded again, and she smiled. The reason some of my attacks seem off, is because I am showing you the full style without show you my whole weapon, she explained, holding up her right arm. She sent a sliver of lightning chakra into the coat. Blades of purple energy erupted from the front and the sides. So the punches are stabbing with that blade, as are the slashes, he nodded looking at her arm. Yes, show me again, with the blades, he instructed. She repeated the set again, showing all of the maneuvers of her bladed coat, and the three kata. In the end she bowed again, and released the chakra. That is much more deadly than it initially appeared, he told her, though I can still see some room for improvement. Still, I would call it a rank style. Thank you, Mr. Akamiki, she bowed, smiling happily. Well, I would ask if you have any more weapons to exhibit, the expansive Jonan noted, but your bag is empty, and our time is almost up. I was my pleasure to administer your Jonan weapons trial, Hanata. Mr. Akamiki, is there something else, Hanata? He turned back to look at her again. The young woman's face was painted with worry. Do you have another test at three? She asked nervously. No, you were my last exam, he said supportively. Then, if you have some time, I would like to talk to you about Hanabi. Chosa Akamiki's normally kind and jovial face creased with a frown. Hello, Naruto, Mike Guy greeted the Chunin as he approached the outside of the arena. But Uzumaki noticed a strain in his eyes, and that Lee's hero was not so loud or grandiose as normal. Is something wrong, Guy Sensei? Naruto asked, more worried about his test than the melodramatic Jonan. No, Guy shook off his doldrums, flashing his teeth and giving the teen a thumbs up, but thank you, for asking. Whatever, Naruto sighed with an exhausted look, can we just start this? Of course, Guy nodded overjoyed by what he perceived as enthusiasm on the part of the Chunin. Inside the arena there are 30 event stations, the Jonin explained, each one designed to test a different facet of your non-combat, non-chakra skills and training. Wait, I thought this was a stealth and tracking test, Naruto interrupted. That is a common misconception, Guy said imperiously, this test can also cover your knowledge of chemistry, your agility skills whether stealth related or not, and your information gathering skills. It is just that stealth and tracking often take center stage. So, as I was saying, there are 30 stations in the arena. You must complete 25 within the three-hour time limit in order to pass. You may attempt the tests in any order you desire. Each task has its own set of rules which must adhere to, though there is also the first universal rule. What's that? Naruto asked, curious yet cautious. Guy took out four cuffs and showed them to the younger man. These manacles restrict your ability to use chakra. You are forbidden to use chakra for any part of this test, and these will be attached to each of your wrists and ankles to help guarantee that you are not tempted. Beyond that, you may do anything you want within the limits of the posted rules, Guy's voice was slightly bitter, if you want to quit a trial and try it again later, you may do so unless the task specifically prohibits it or limits the number of times you can try it. You may use any equipment you brought, except for chakra-based equipment like scrolls and your weapon. Again, 
unless the station specifically prohibits the use of certain items. He drilled the point home, understanding whom he was dealing with. I will also warn you that while most stations you cannot fail, the caterpillar browed shinobi offered, there are nine that you can fail, so if you are defeated by six of those, you automatically flunk out of the test. Naruto nodded his understanding. The proctor handed the team the four bracelets, anklets, and the blonde buckled them into place. Are you ready to begin? Guy asked loudly. Bring it. Uzumaki shouted. Then three hours starts, now. The taijutsu master shouted, clicking the starter on two of the five stopwatches around his neck. Naruto rushed into the arena, taking note of the large, colorful flags that marked each station. Most were on the arena floor, but a number were spread amongst the stands. Some of the tests were obvious, like the track with the hurdles, and the 300-foot tall climbing wall. But many of the others were less obvious in their requirements, particularly the two large cages. The Chunan noticed a group of ten tables close together in the seating, not far from his current position, and he darted over to them. The first station had a monitor, keyboard, and mouse on the desk. Naruto read the wooden plaque on the flagpole, even as he slid into the bleacher seat. Computer search test. Find and open the file within two minutes. You may attempt this test up to three times, but the proctor will hide the video after each attempt. Do not damage the computer. My newest, and in some ways most fiendish test, Guy commented behind him, even as these machines become more common, many shinobi remain ignorant of. Done, Naruto said, as the images of Lee, Neji, and Tenten training began to flash across the screen. But, I never said start, the boisterous ninja deflated. Sorry, Guy-sensei, Naruto didn't sound apologetic, but Shizu Nisan has been forcing me to learn to use a computer. I suppose that's a good thing, then. Naruto stood, and jogged to the next station. Message decryption. Decode the provided message. There is no limit on time or number of attempts, but you can only use the pens and paper provided. Naruto looked at the slip of paper. Then he turned it on its side. After a few more seconds, he returned it to the upright position. He studied it for a minute, making some notes on one of the pieces of paper. Finally, he shrugged, scribbled something down, and handed it to the examiner. Power of the youth. Guy read aloud, then shook his head, that is not the message, Naruto. Uzumaki did not even look at the code, but wrote something on the next sheet of paper and thrust it towards Neji's teacher. Handsome devil of the leaf village. The Jonan grinned, as he informed the Chunan, niece try, but wrong again. Never mind, Naruto announced hastily, let's keep moving and I'll come back if I have time later. A wise strategy. Spot the difference. There are 24 differences between these three images. Find and circle all discrepancies. Some might be the same in two pictures, but different in the third. Even if the change is different in all three it only counts as one towards the total. This is a kid's game, Naruto complained. This is a test of patience and observation, Guy counted. The three photos showed Guy and his three students. The first disparity was glaringly obvious, in the third picture Neji Hyuga was smiling. Naruto quickly began to note the discrepancies. The color of the wrap on Tenten's leaf headband was green instead of blue. Rock Lee's bandages stopping before his fingers. Guy Sensei, a Neji's tonfus one difference or two? Naruto asked. In the first picture both of Neji's weapons were visible at his belt, but the second picture he only had one, and in the last picture he had none. Just one, the proctor answered. Uzumaki found most of the changes quickly, but as was often the case, the last two tripped him up. Oh, the number of straps on your vest pocket. The teen shouted at the older shinobi, marking the change. One more, one more, Naruto chanted, scanning the pages. Then he noticed something, and his face spread in a goof grin. Guy sensei, are your toenails painted in this one? Naruto held up the middle photo, glancing back at the other two to make sure of the difference. Yes, well, Guy coughed, that was a medicinal poultice the hockage applied after I splinted my first two toenails on a penalty game of kicking a can around the village. I had tent and color the rest so they matched. That's it, Naruto handed the printer papers to Guy. After a brief examination, the proctor nodded. Naruto completed the next three tests in short order. Identifying the gender and weight of a person by their footprint was easy thanks to Jiraiya's perverted measurements training. 
he failed to pick the lock on the first of his three tries, but thanks to his training with Kakashi and Hanata, he was able to get it on the second try. And the table containing the five scented rags was practically a joke to him. Even with his chakra sealed, he still had the best nose outside the Inazuka clan. Unfortunately Naruto failed the next test, the ability to name the pitch of notes played by Guy Sensei on a keyboard. Unconcerned, Uzumaki trotted over to the next event. Foraging. Seven of the ten plants on this table are safe to eat, if not necessarily appetizing. Pick five of the seven, and sample them. None of the samples are deadly. The first two boxes were practically freebies, Naruto cracked open the walnut and ate it, then began chewing on the apple while he regarded the other eight pieces of flora. After he finished the apple, he took the large dandelion flower, and swallowed it whole. Then he paused, considering his remaining options. Oh, these are pine nuts, Naruto noted happily after sniffing the small seeds. He cracked a few of them open, and swallowed them. Those are birch leaves, Naruto decided looking in the fifth box, can't eat those. But those are hibiscus, Naruto mangled the name of the plant, not my favorite taste, but edible. He took one of the flowers and chewed on it quickly. He made a face as he swallowed. Very good, Naruto, Guy complimented him, shall we move on? Wait, Naruto stopped him, can I take one of the mallow stems, to get this taste out of my mouth? Guy wasn't sure if the younger ninja was totally sincere, or if he was showing off, but he gave a thumbs up nevertheless. You sure know your plants, Naruto, Guy observed. Yeah, well I had some bad experiences in some of my early missions, so I did some studying, the teen explained, plus, pervy sage made me cook and he has a taste for some strange foods. I couldn't tell you how many dandelion salads I made for him during those three years. P-O-S-I-O-N-S. Before you are three special teas. One is harmless. One will knock you out for 20 minutes. One will knock you out for one hour. Read the ingredients, and drink whichever one you want. Because this is a penalty test, you are considered to pass even if you drink one of the drug blends. Naruto paused to consider the lists. He was more familiar with edible plants than drinkable herbs. Plus these were the scientific names, and he only knew the common names. But it was an easy point, and he could count on his luck. He looked at the clock. He had spent just over 30 minutes on the first eight tests. He could probably afford to lose 20 minutes, but not an hour. He glanced over the lists again, and one ingredient in the left cup caught his eye. Humulus lupulus, he read, that's hops, like in beer. And drinking beer makes you sleepy. So if I count that one out, I have a 50-50 chance. He pondered the herbs for another half a minute, before grabbing his head in frustration. Gah, what good does this do me if I waste too much time trying to figure it out? With that, Naruto grabbed the cup on the right, and slammed the beverage. The infusion was pleasantly warm on his throat. Uzumaki blinked purposefully, to see if his eyelids felt heavy. Noticing no change, he jumped up, and headed for the last table. But before he was halfway there, his knees gave out. The Chunin had just enough focus and control to slump into the bleachers, instead of falling on his face. But he was snoring before he was fully seated. Eighteen minutes later, a particularly violent snore and the diminished effects of the drug caused Uzumaki to jerk back to consciousness. After checking one of the clocks hanging from the pillars, Naruto staggered over to the final sit-down test, and the penultimate station in the stands of the arena. Explosives. Use the ingredients to mix an explosive strong enough to destroy the house, but not the table. There is no limit on the time or number of attempts, but if you run out of ingredients or destroy the table, you fail. The reinforced platform contained a number of carefully labeled chemicals, a mortar and pestle, and handful of vials, and over a dozen matchstick houses. With a happy yawn, Naruto plunked down, and began grinding the charcoal into powder. The boys always do better with the explosives than with the tea, Guy thought to himself, as Naruto shattered the model on the first attempt. And he didn't even scorch the workstation. Without waiting for confirmation, the blonde man stood, and jogged unsteadily to the last flag in the seating. Balance beam course. Navigate to the end. There is no limit on the time or number of attempts. Easier said than done, Naruto groused. The two-inch wide beam was neither straight nor level. It had angled and curved turns, and inclined up and down. It meandered for over 200 feet, through three levels of the benches. Okay, 
Naruto took a deep breath and set his foot on the beam. Hanata's boyfriend edged carefully forwards, but after the first handful of steps, his vision went blurry, and he slipped off. Covering his face as he yawned again, he plodded back to the beginning. The second time, he made it almost halfway before falling. But on the third time, he nearly tripped on the sharpest downgrade, but he finally made it to the end. Okay. Uzumaki exhaled out the last of the effects of the drug, and looked down, now into the arena. Upon landing on the floor, Naruto quickly completed the simplest events. The 400-meter hurdles, the monkey bars, the long jump and the wall jump. He didn't even try the, catch a butterfly, test. He had some trouble with sneaking past the guard dog, until he went back and dipped some mallow stems in the tea he had rejected. The Doberman ate the tasty snack, but did not warm to him. Not that it mattered, because a minute later the hound was sleeping peacefully. He then completed the tightrope walk, the weight lifting, and the pole hop. The blindfold course took him four tries to complete. And Mike Guy was so mercilessly accurate with swinging log course that it took Naruto over 11 minutes to get from the beginning to the end. After taking a few breaths to recover from his new bruises, he proceeded to the next station. The spider climb was right next to the swinging logs, and Naruto was tall enough that and strong enough that it was a relative simple task for him to support himself between the parallel walls of the course, even as it curved upwards into a vertical path. Irritant course. Remove all clothing except for your undergarments, including your shoes. You must pass through the following hallway without vocalizing in any way. There is no limit on the number of attempts, but the course must be completed in under three minutes. Um. What is this, Gai-sensei? Naruto asked dubiously. This specially built corridor is full of traps designed to make you cry out, Guy explained with a huge smirk, feathers to tickle you, sandpaper to scratch you, and other sorts of surprises. And by exposing as much of your skin as decorum allows, it makes it even tougher. So if you plan to do this, strip down. Fine, fine, Uzumaki removed his shozaku, and moved up to the entrance of the artificial tunnel. He stepped in and immediately howled in pain as he stepped on a pin. With a sheepish expression, Naruto took two steps back, and started in again. He shuffled his feet along the floor to scatter the tacks, until he couldn't feel any more. But just as he passed the upright nails, sticks with feather dusters began poking out of the walls and ceiling, lightly brushing his sides and neck. Naruto clamped his mouth firmly closed to keep from laughing. After the feathers, came random jets of hot and cold water. Next were the protrusions with the sandpaper, followed by a gross, slippery sludge. Finally, the floor sent minor sparks into his feet at random intervals. But that was the last challenge, and Naruto pushed through the curtain, taking a deep breath in relief. Not too bad, Guy noted, you almost ran out of time though. And speaking of running out for time, Naruto looked the clock on the edge of the arena again. He only had 34 minutes left. He finished dressing, and hurried to the next closest task. Camera evasion. Travel down the hallway, avoiding being spotted by any of the surveillance cameras. You cannot damage the generator, turn it off, or disconnect the cameras. Limit of three attempts. Course must be completed in two minutes. Unlike the previous hallway guy had built, this one had multiple turns and did not have a top. From the entrance Naruto could see two cameras with very little in the way of blind spots. He looked at the panel again, and then turned to Guy. These are the only rules, Guy-sensei. The examinee prompted for confirmation. That is correct, the Jonan told him with a touch of trepidation. Naruto grinned, and turned and ran towards the stands. Guy followed him back to the explosives test. The Chunin quickly began mixing the components. What are you doing, Naruto? Guy asked forcefully. Making smoke bombs, the teen answered shortly paying close attention to the reagents as he added them to the vial. Inside he was cursing the delay as the chemicals mixed. Didn't you bring any? Guy was confused but relieved, and he glanced at Naruto's backpack. Only paper smoke bombs, Uzumaki explained, since they're lighter. But I can't activate them without my chakra. He finished four vials, and darted back to the test. After coughing his way through the soot-filled hallway, he received yet another thumbs up, and ran to the second cage. The first cage had contained the butterfly test, and Naruto was curious what this one was. Stealth and tracking basics. Track down Hippotidono. You must touch him before he runs. 
If you feed or injure Hippoty Dono, you will be disqualified. Hippoty Dono. Naruto gawked at the instructions. Guy lifted a much smaller cage, showing him the white rabbit inside. Hippoty Dono is an ordinary bunny, and not fond of humans besides me, Tenton's teacher said sternly, if you get too close, and he notices you, he will run. You must touch him before he runs. Chasing him down will not be accepted. Inside of the cage was like a miniature forest, with logs set up like trees and leaves strewn thickly across the floor. Guy took Hippity out of the travel cage, and set him down inside the testing area. Once he was free, the rabbit scampered off, disappearing. How are you going to know if I follow the rules? Naruto asked, approaching the door. Security cameras and genjutsu, the proctor answered simply. Exhaling determinedly, Naruto stepped into the cage, and Guy closed the door behind him. The Chunin was surprised how well the interior of the cage simulated a small section of woods. He looked at the scattered leaves from the rabbit's trail, and sniffed at the air. Then he stuck his pinky in his mouth, before holding it high in the air, to get the direction of the wind. I don't know how good a rabbit can smell, so better to approach from downwind, he thought as he padded silently forward. The scent was getting heavier, and the team moved off the trail to an alternate path where he could still see Hippity's path, but the breeze would be blowing his odor away from the hair. He slowed further, not wanting to risk rustling the leaves or stepping on a hidden twig. Still, he counted off the seconds, worrying about how long this was taking. And there the rodent was, crouched in clear spot in the dirt, his ears straight up, and his nose twitching. Hippity's head swiveled around, and Naruto froze, breathing slowly and worrying about the volume of his heartbeat. But after another twenty count, the rabbit seemed to relax, slightly, and he stopped looking to and fro. Naruto eased in closer, getting within five feet of the animal. Suddenly the wind shifted, and the rabbit's nose began to twitch faster again. He turned, looking straight at the ninja. Uzumaki froze, hoping the hare could only see movement or something like that. But the rabbit stared straight at him. Naruto did not move, but neither did Hippity stop looking at the human. After five minutes in the uncomfortable position he had been caught Naruto's legs started to cramp up. Just when he thought he couldn't take it anymore, the rabbit moved. However, instead of looking away or fleeing, Hippity hopped cautiously closer to Naruto, eventually settling in against the young man's leg. Uzumaki reached down and gingerly touched the hair. It did not flee, but leaned into his hand. He gently stroked it, and the rabbit made a sound not unlike purring. Before Naruto had noticed Guy was standing next to him, picking up Hippity. I've never seen him act like that before, Guy admitted, but I guess this means you passed. Both ninjas exited the cage, and seeing he had less than 10 minutes, Naruto darted to the next station, not waiting while Guy returned the hair to his enclosure. Singing floor. Cross the singing floor without setting it off. You have five attempts and no time limit. The Chunin looked at the floor as if it might attack him. It looked like a simple set of wooden planks, raised slightly. But Naruto knew better. The wood was shaped and set in such a way that stepping onto it would cause the grain of the different boards to rub, creating a melodic resonance. No time limit, Naruto whispered ironically to himself as Mike Guy caught up. Well, I won't be able to do it on the first try, so I'll use that to scout, Uzumaki told himself as much as the Jonin. Unseen behind him, Guy nodded his approval. Naruto put one foot on the plank, more softly than his normal gait, but not full stealth mode. Immediately a gentle yet loud sound filled the air, like a young woman humming incoherently. Naruto slid and stepped all over the testing platform, getting a feel for its most sensitive spots and a few safe points. Finally he reached the end, having spent four minutes testing it. He darted back to the beginning, and started again. He reached it as far as he could, softly, evenly putting his weight on one of the hard connections between the floor and the support beams underneath. The singing floor did not react, and Naruto exhaled in relief. He took his next step safely, but his third move set off a slight hum. Crap. Naruto cursed and ran back to the beginning, not caring the noise he made, but still tracking it. As soon as he reached the beginning he started again, repeating the same first two steps. But in his haste and annoyance, he flubbed the second move, and the floor began to vibrate again. Naruto took a deep breath to center himself, and returned calmly to the beginning. He started again, more focused. 
he didn't pay attention to Guy all the time. It was only Naruto and the singing floor. He set out smoothly and evenly, making it to the halfway point almost before he was aware he was moving. Then he paused, trying to remember the best route. He carefully pictured his first run again, and moved forward with deliberate confidence. Part of him said that despite this feeling, he was moving slowly, but he ignored that. I can do this, he thought, I have to do this. Then he realized something. He was at the end. I did it, he roared, but his excitement was drowned when he looked at the clock. As fast as he could, Naruto ran to the next station. Climbing wall. Climb over this wall. Ropes, cords, cables, etc. are not allowed, nor are climbing claws. Naruto felt an unusual bout of vertigo as he stared up the concave surface. But he forced it down, knowing time was short. Those are the only rules, right, Naruto said quickly. Yes, Guy sighed, hoping this wasn't going to be the same as his previous examinee. Naruto dug into his backpack, extracting two kunai. Ignoring the handholds carved into the wood, he buried the first blade, and pulled himself up so he could embed the second blade higher. He extracted the first knife and repeated the process, pulling himself up quickly by the daggers. Guy's head darted back and forth between his stopwatches and the team. About two-thirds of the way up, the blade in Naruto's left hand snapped, and he nearly fell. Guy moved into position to catch him, knowing without his chakra, this fall would be as deadly to Naruto as to any civilian. Dropping the splintered dagger, Uzumaki caught one of the grips with his right foot, and went into his backpack for another kunai. Once he had another blade, he resumed climbing, trying to increase his speed even as the outward angle of the fake cliff increased. Nearly at the peak, one of his stabs hit a knot, and he was forced to try again. Pressing harder, he secured the kunai, and then swung his leg over the lip. Naruto clambered onto the top, and slid down the back side. Did I make it? He demanded of the teacher. Six, five, four, three, two, one. Guy counted down, time is up. And with exactly 25 points, you pass. All right, Naruto shouted, jumping into the air. I gotta go find Hanata. Later Guy Sensei. Naruto shed the chakra inhibitors unceremoniously and raced out of the arena. That will be all for this video, be sure to like, subscribe, share, and comment down below for more videos, goodbye.